Arcomere consisting. Now, this one we call it as a muscle cell. This is muscle cell. The muscle cell is also called the muscle fiber. Both are correct. It is also called the sarcocyte. Now, in the muscle cell, what is present? Many myofibrils are present. This is A band. This is I I band. Another I band. The I divides by Z line. The I divides into two by Z line. The distance between two Z lines. Sarcomere. In a sarcomere, what are the components? Part of I complete a part of I. I divides into two by Z line. So, in the sarcomere, part of I complete a part of I. Now we observe. A sarcomere consists a complete A band plus two halves of I band. This is part of I band, part of I band. So that one we call it as sarcomere distance between two Z lines. In a sarcomere part of I, complete A part of I. Now the correct answer is. We go for the next question. T tubule is formed at A I junction in. Now, in case of mammals, this is the muscle cell or muscle fiber or sarcocyte. It is governed by plasma lemma called sarcolemma. And this one we call it as A band. And this one we call it as I band. Now the I divides into two by Z. The I divides into two by Z. The distance between the two Z lines, sarcomere. Now in case of mammals. Between I and A, the sarcolemma undergoes folding or invagination. You observe, we are getting a T-shaped tubule. On either side, two cisternae. Okay, one T-tubule plus two cisternae. That we call it as triad. Now. Between I and A, a triad. Again, here the sarcolemma folds. Now we are getting a T-shaped structure. Now again, it is a triad. Now here, in a muscle cell, in a sarcomere, how many triads are present? Two triads. In a muscle cell. How many triads are present? Many. What is the sarcomere place between two Z lines? In a sarcomere, how many triads? Two. In a muscle cell, how many triads? Many. What is a triad? One T tubule on either side, two cisternae. Now here, such triad between A and I, where it is present only in case of mammals. Now the answer is. Now the next question. The dark band of sarcomere consists of. Generally, the students are going to mistake. The sarcomere in the sarcomere the dark band. Now, this is the muscle cell. 
and this is the i band and this is a band and again this is i band like that they are arranged and in the center of i what is present students z now between the two z lines what is present sarcomere now here what is the dark band a now the arrow mark indicates the lateral the lateral portions of a band in the lateral portions of a band what is present the myosin and actin and troponin and tropo myosin actin troponin tropomyosin and myosin all these present in the lateral portions of a band in the sarcomere name the band that is much darker the lateral portions of a now based on this information what is the dark band of sarcomere no doubt a now we are discussing the lateral portions of a the lateral portions of a consisting actin troponin tropomyosin and myosin protein made filaments now go for the next question read the following statements about the events of muscle contraction and arrange them in a sequence first we have to observe the statements transmission of action potential what is meant by action potential nothing but impulse transmission of action potential by t tubule release of calcium ions arrival of nerve impulse and release of acetylcholine students again observe release of acetylcholine choline at motor end plate e n d motor end plate reaction of calcium ions with tpc uncovering of active sites reaction between bet reaction between active site and myosin cross bridge forms actomyosin complex now as we observe the sliding filament theory now this is the motor neuron this is the motor neuron the motor neuron brings the motor impulse now this is the muscle cell the space between teledendrons of motor neuron sarcolemma of muscle cell this we call it as the motor end plate now as we observe the motor neuron these are dendrons the dendrons receive impulse here the impulse is named as action potential now the impulse received by dendrons then goes to cytom axon teledendrons motor end plate now what is excited the sarcolemma then what is excited the t tubule then what is excited the cisterne now what will be released the calcium ions the calcium ions are attached to tnc now because of the calcium ions as we observe this one we call it as the thin filament on the thin filaments what are present the active sites these dots are called active sites whenever the muscle is at rest the active sites are covered by tropomyosin whenever the muscle is at rest on the thin filament 
we are unable to observe the active sites. Now, the calcium ions release, the calcium ions remove the tropomyosin, the calcium ions remove the tropomyosin. Now, automatically what are exposed active sites? Now, with this active site, what is attached? The myosin. Myosin plus active site. In the active site, mainly what type of protein is present? Actin. So, myosin plus actin unite to, to form actomyosin complex. This is also called the cross bridge. So, that based on this information, what is the correct option? Arrival of nerve impulse and release of acetylcholine at motor end plate. Transmission of action potential by T tubule. Release of calcium ions. Calcium ions bind to TPC. Now active sites are exposed. Reaction between active site and myosin will form a cross bridge. Based on this, the answer is the one. Now we go for the next question. Assertion. During contraction, the size of sarcomere. During contraction, the size of sarcomere in a striated muzzle is reduced without reduction in the size of thick or thin filaments. Now, this is the muzzle cell and this is A band. From the A band, what type of filaments will arise? The thick filaments. And this is I band and this is I band. From the I band, what type of filaments will arise? Thin filaments. In the center of A band, what is present? You have to observe H zone. In the center of H, what is present? M line. Now, during the muzzle contraction, what is going to happen? The thin filaments slide on thick filaments. Again repeating, during muzzle contraction, the thin filaments slide on thick filaments. So, that both thick and thin filaments enter into the middle part of A band. Again repeating, during muzzle contraction, the thick and thin filaments enter into A band up to the middle part that means up to H zone only but not up to the M line so that there is no change in the A band. So, here during contraction the size of sarcomere in a striped muzzle or striated muzzle or voluntary muzzle or skeletal muzzle is reduced without reduction in the size of thick or thin filaments. Reason, during muzzle contraction, the thin filaments slide past over the thick filaments and are pulled towards the center of sarcomere, but not up to the M line. The thick and thin filaments enter into A band only up to H zone, but not the M line. So, there is no change in the A. So, both are correct or he explains A. Now, we go for the next question. Hensen's disc. Now, what is the Hensen's disc? This is A band. In the center of A, what is present? H zone. That is called Hensen's disc. Hensen's disc in the sarcomere is darker than I band. Because as we observe the I band, in the I band what are present? Actin, proponin, tropomyosin. These proteins molecular weight is very, very less. 
in the A band mainly what is present myosin in the H what is present myosin in the M line what is present myosin no doubt the myosin protein molecular weight is more than that of molecular weight of actin proponin tropomyosin so that the A the H the I are much darker than that of the parts of I that means I and Z etc. Now here what is the answer presence of the myosin filaments. Now we go for the next one. Study the following statements and choose the correct one. First one walk along mechanism is the basis of sliding filament theory. Now the sliding filament theory proposed by Hugh Axley and Hansen. In the sliding filament theory the thin filaments slide on thick filaments that means along with the thick filaments what are moving the thin filaments. So it is called walk along theory. It means along with the thick filaments, the thin filaments are walking. So, walk along mechanism is the basis of sliding filament theory. So, the statement 1 is correct. Second, sliding filament theory was proposed by Hugh Axley and Hansen. Third one, triad systems are present in M line. That is wrong. In case of mammals, we discussed already. In mammals, the triad present between I and A. Other than mammals, that means in Pisces, amphibians, reptiles, Aves, where triad is present in the Z line. But here what they gave? Triad systems are present in M line. That is wrong. Fourth, the tail of myosin molecules are present towards H zone. And now, this one we call it as the A band. In the center of A band, what is present H? Now from the A band, what will arise? The thick filament. TH means thick filament. Now, along the length of thick filament, what is present? The myosin molecules are present. Now these are myosin molecules. Now this one we call it as the head of myosin molecule. And this one we call it as the neck of myosin molecule. And this one we call it as the tail of myosin molecule. Now you observe the diagram. The tail of myosin molecule is towards the H zone. So the fourth one is correct. Here what is the wrong? Only the third statement. We go for the next question. In the sarcomere, the number of T tubules present in the striated muscle of man is 2. Now, this one we call it as the muscle cell, and this one we call it as A band, and this one we call it as I band, and this one we call it as I band. In the center of I, what is present? Z. Between two Z lines, what is called? The sarcomere. Now, between I and A, what is present? One T tubule, two cisterne. Here again, one T tubule and two cisterne. So, in a sarcomere, how many triads are present? Two. In a muscle cell, how many triads are present? Many. Here, what is the assertion? In a sarcomere, the number of T tubules present in the striated muscle of man is 2. That is correct because the reason in mammals, the triad system is present at the junction of A and I. So, in a sarcomere, how many triads? 2. So, both are correct or he explains A. Now, we move for the next question. Joint between carpel and metacarpel of thumb. Now, 
as we observe this part this part we call it as the wrist in the wrist what are present the carpels now these are these are called the metacarpels now these are called metacarpels and these are carpels now as we observe the thumb the joint between carpel and metacarpel of thumb we call it as saddle joint so because of this joint the thumb enjoys free movement when compared to that of other fingers when compared to that of thumb the remaining fingers does not move freely when compared to that of the remaining fingers the thumb enjoys the greater movement because what type of joint present between carpel and metacarpal of thumb that we call it as the saddle joint the answer is now we go for the next question assertion friction in a movable joint is less now as we observe the movable joint this one we call it as one bone and this one we call it as another bone in a joint how many bones are present two bones are present now these two bones are connected by elastic ligament now this entire joint is present in articular capsule now the articular capsule inside lined by the synovial membrane now this one we call it as synovial membrane now the synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid now this is the synovial fluid as long as synovial fluid is present the bones do not get any friction so here the friction in a movable joint is less in a movable joint the friction between the two bones is very very less because the articular capsule the joint is present in a articular capsule the articular capsule is filled with what type of fluid synovial fluid secreted by synovial membrane so in a movable joint between two bones the friction is very very less so both are correct or explain c now we go for the next question joints of phalange now as we observe all these are the fingers in the fore limb these are called fingers in the hind limb they are called the toes but what is the common word digits now as we observe the fingers in the fingers the bones are present the bones present in the fingers are called phalange now in between phalange what type of joint is present hinge joint now as we observe the bones in the fingers are toes they exhibit the movement only in one direction if it exhibits this movement the angle decreases if in this stage the angle increases so the joint in the phalange exhibit movement only in one direction that is called hinge joint the other name of hinge joint now the answer is dinglimi now we go for the next question a joint in which a bony projection of one bone fits into a bony socket of another bone immovably now this is one bone this part we call it as bone now this is the projection of a bone now this is another bone and this is the socket now the bony projection of one bone fits into the socket of another bone now this is as we observe this is a socket and this is a bony projection the bony projection inserts into the socket of another bone there is no free movement immovable 
that we call it as gom for jes the answer is now we go for the next question peg like odontoid process is developed from peg like odontoid process is developed from now as we observe the neck region this part we call it as neck region in the neck region the vertebrae are called cervical vertebrae in almost all mammals how many cervical vertebrae in the neck region seven the first cervical vertebra is called atlas the second cervical vertebra is called axis now this is the axis second cervical vertebra it has a projection called odontoid process now this is the ring like atlas this we call it as atlas on the atlas what is present the head is present so as we observe this condition now this is this one we call it as the axis this is odontoid process now as we observe odontoid process on odontoid process the ring like atlas rotates so that we can move our head in the rotatory motion because on the atlas what is present the head the atlas is a ring like vertebra it freely rotates on odontoid process of axis now here peg like odontoid process is developed from what type of vertebra second that we call it as axis now the answer is the axis now we go for the next question shoulder joint what is meant by shoulder joint now as we observe this one we call it as shoulder joint now here the pectoral girdle is present in the pectoral girdle a cavity present called glenoid cavity now this bone we call it as humerus the head of humerus fit into glenoid cavity so that we can move our four limb in all the directions so it is an example for the ball and socket joint it is also called the multi axial because we can rotate this in all the directions so it is called the ball and socket joint or it is also called the multi axial what is the shoulder joint joint present between the head of humerus and glenoid cavity now here the answer is multi axial next question the digital formula of hind limb of rabbit the digital formula of hind limb of rabbit now this part we call it as hind limb in the hind limb how many toes are present that is four toes this is the first toe absent this is the second toe third fourth fifth how many toes are present only four because the first one is absent now in the second toe how many phalanges three 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 now here this toe absent so 0 0 3 3 3 now what is the answer is now we go for the next question floating ribs of rabbit floating ribs of rabbit now this part we call it as the sternum this part we call it as sternum where it is on the ventral side of thorax this part we call it as sternum now as we observe the vertebral column the vertebral column has the vertebrae now this one we call it as the vertebral column the vertebral column has the vertebrae now as we observe first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth 10th 11th 12th and 13 now the first pair of ribs attached to sternum 
second pair attached to sternum, third pair attached to the sternum, fourth attached to the sternum, fifth attached to the sternum, sixth attached to the sternum, seventh attached to the sternum. Now, what about the eighth and ninth? The eighth and ninth attached to seventh. The ribs that are attached to sternum are called true and remaining are called false. Eighth and ninth attached to the seventh. Now, tenth one, eleventh one, twelfth, thirteen. They are not attached to the sternum. They are also false ribs and they are freely floating. Here, what is the question? Floating ribs of rabbit are tenth, eleventh, twelfth, or thirteen also. So, tenth. 11th and 12th pairs of ribs. Now, the next question. Arrange the correct sequence of four limb bones from proximal to distal. Now, this is the four limb. This is the proximal part and distal part. Now, arrange the bones of four limbs from anterior to posterior or proximal to distal. Now, here the first bone is the humerus followed by radius alana and here carpels and these are metacarpels and in the fingers what are present phalange. So, arrangement of bones humerus, radio alana, carpels, metacarpels and bones in the fingers are called phalange. So, based on this the answer is. Now, we go for the next question. Anterior margin of cranial cavity. Now, this part we call it as the cranium. The cranium is also called the brain box. Now, as we observe the cranium, this is dorsal side, this is ventral side and these are lateral sides. This is posterior and the anterior. <coughs> The anterior end of cranium is covered by what type of plate? Kibri form. Now the answer is. Next question. Study the following and choose the correct one. The skeletal system formed from the body wall is visceral skeleton. The skeletal system formed from the body wall, somatic skeleton. The skeletal system formed from the pharyngeal wall is somatic. Now, here the skeleton derived from body wall is somatic. The skeleton derived from the pharyngeal wall is visceral skeleton. Again, repeating the skeleton derived from the body wall is somatic, the skeleton derived from pharyngeal wall that is visceral skeleton. So, based on this, the correct answer is. Now, we go for the next question. Now, assertion. The skull of rabbit is trophy basic. Now, what is meant by trophy basic skull? Now, as we observe the rabbit, this part we call it as the skull. At the base of skull, two occipital condyles present. Two occipital condyles. How many occipital condyles? Two. So, it is called dicondylic. And this one we call it as the orbit. Now, here what is the assertion? The skull of rabbit is trophy basic. Reason the skull contain an interorbital septum between optic capsules. Now, this is the orbit in the orbit the optic capsule present. The dotted line indicates the optic capsule. Now, the optic capsules connected by interorbital septum. So, the skull we call it as. The skull we call it as trophy basic skull. We have to discuss 
the remaining in the next class.